Are you ready to embark on a fascinating journey into the world of two mysterious tribes? On one side, we have the enigmatic Hadzabe tribe, renowned for their unique hunter-gatherer ways. And on the other side, we have the infamous cannibal tribes, following the practice of cannibalism. So let's explore the intriguing differences between these two fascinating groups in this video. Firstly, the Hadza tribe, also known as Hadzabe, is a special group of indigenous people in Tanzania. They are skilled hunter-gatherers who live near Lake Ayasi and the Serengeti Plateau. Around 1,200 to 1,300 Hadza people exist, but only about 400 rely solely on their traditional hunting and gathering methods. They have a unique language with clicking sounds, one of the oldest still used today. The Hadza have lived in their area for thousands of years, with little change in their way of life. They are excellent hunters and hunt using homemade bows and arrows. From the age of 10, young boys in the Hadza tribe learn how to hunt using traditional tools. They begin by hunting small animals like rabbits and birds and gradually learn to track and kill them. The bows they make are about six feet long, heavy and strong. They test the power of their bows using a spring balance in the field. These bows can reach targets about 25 to 50 yards away and even take down large animals like giraffes, impalas, and zebras. The Hadza men make their bows and arrows using materials from their local environment, such as wood and animal sinew. To make their arrows more effective against moving animals, they sometimes coat them with poison from the desert rose plant. In addition to hunting, the Hadza also uses traps to catch smaller animals like birds and rats. They make these traps using sticks and vines they find around them. Interestingly, the Hadza people also eat predators like lions, leopards, and other wild cats. To hunt these bigger animals, they use specially poisoned arrows, which increase their chances of success. When hunting, the Hadza follow a strategic approach, starting with preparation the night before. They mainly use bows and arrows for hunting. Their bows differ from European bows as they are very stiff and cannot be pulled back as far. The arrows they use vary in design and purpose. Some are simple, sharpened wooden points for hunting small animals, while others have metal arrowheads obtained through trade with the Datoga, a neighboring group known for their blacksmithing skills. These metal-tipped arrows are mainly used for hunting baboons, which the Hadza prefer as food. Some arrows have metal tips coated with poison, which they use to hunt larger animals like antelopes. The poison takes effect within 15, 20 minutes after injecting it into the animal. After shooting the animal, the Hadza tracks it down and removes the part of the animal that came into contact with the poison. One arrow design they use has sharpened shafts with attached corn cobs at the end. This unique design is effective for hunting birds and small mammals. Instead of piercing the target, these arrows deliver a blunt blow like a hammer, which gives a strong impact. The corn cob tip also increases the arrow's surface area, making it more likely to hit the target successfully. Moreover, talking about their diet, they have a diverse diet that includes roots, berries, honey, and various animals like porcupines, hyrax, and birds. They don't store food and only hunt for what they need daily. Their diet mainly consists of plants like berries, tubers with fiber, baobab fruit, seeds, leafy greens, and marula nuts. They also enjoy honey, including honeycomb and even small amounts of bee larvae. Besides that, they eat meat from birds, porcupines, and wild game. They don't eat processed or farmed foods. Their diet is very natural. Meat is an essential part of their diet and they value it greatly. They depend on hunting to get meat and have inherited traditional hunting techniques from their ancestors. When they hunt for meat, they aim for clean kills, targeting vital organs to ensure the animal dies quickly and humanely. After hunting, they use all parts of the animal. They skillfully preserve the hide to make clothing and other useful items, ensuring nothing goes to waste. They consume the meat in different ways. Some parts are eaten right away without any added spices or seasonings. They may also preserve some meat for later consumption. So the Hadza tribe is scary but not dangerous. They don't usually hunt in any areas. They have private hunting areas, but they have many challenges as well. The Yaeda Valley, which used to be uninhabited because of setsi flies, is now occupied by Datoga herders who clear the Hadza lands for their livestock. 
This disrupts the Hadza's food sources like berries, tubers, and honey, and their watering holes are also affected, leaving them with less water. The Hadza's way of life has been impacted by tourism, too. Although documentaries have made them a tourist attraction, the money from tourism often doesn't directly benefit the Hadza, but goes to government offices and tourism companies. Moreover, some Hadza are struggling with alcoholism, leading to the loss of their cultural knowledge. Let's now talk about cannibalism and cannibal tribes. On the other hand, the term cannibal tribes refers to certain groups in different parts of the world who have, at some point in their history, practiced cannibalism, meaning they consume the flesh of other humans. These tribes have various reasons and beliefs associated with this practice, such as spiritual rituals, revenge against enemies, or even as a form of sustenance in extreme circumstances. Cannibalism is when humans eat the flesh or organs of other human beings. It has been practiced in various cultures and historical periods. Some groups, like the Neanderthals, are believed to have practiced cannibalism, and it has been documented in ancient Egypt, Roman Egypt, and even during famines. The island Carib people gained a reputation as cannibals based on legends from the 17th century, though the accuracy of these stories is debated. Cannibalism has been observed in different parts of the world, including Fiji, the Amazon Basin, the Congo, and among the Maori people of New Zealand. It was also practiced in New Guinea and the Solomon Islands, where human flesh was sold at markets. Recently, it has been reported during wars in places like Liberia and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Some argue that cannibalism challenges cultural norms and raises questions about acceptable human behavior. Scholars debate whether there is solid evidence of cannibalism being a socially accepted practice worldwide throughout history. In early modern Europe, there was a form of cannibalism where body parts or blood were consumed for supposed medical benefits. This practice was most common in the 17th century. Even in modern times, there have been cases of cannibalism during extreme situations, such as famine, as seen in the Donner Party and the Uruguayan Air Force Flight 571 crash survivors. Some individuals have engaged in cannibalism for disturbing reasons, like sexual pleasure, and some infamous examples include Jeffrey Dahmer, Armin Mayways, Issei Sagawa, and Albert Fish. However, there is resistance to labeling cannibalism as a mental disorder. But still, it is popular in various countries, and some tribes practice cannibalism. In some far-off places, there are tribes known as cannibal tribes, and they have lived this way for thousands of years. One of these tribes is called the Aghori, and they are from India. They use herbal drugs, alcohol, and meditation in their rituals, but also involve human flesh. They obtain corpses from the Ganges River set afloat by relatives who cannot afford a proper cremation or burial. Another cannibal tribe is the Asmat from New Guinea Island. They traditionally hunted their enemies and used their skulls in cooking. There's a famous incident where they were believed to be involved in the death of Michael Rockefeller, a member of the Rockefeller family. One more tribe called the Korowai also lives in New Guinea and practices witchcraft and cannibalism, although some suggest they might be exaggerating these practices for outside attention. Lastly, there is the Sentinelese tribe, living on an isolated island off India's eastern coast. They are one of the last uncontacted people in the world and have had very limited interaction with the outside world. They speak a unique language and have lived in isolation for a long time. When comparing these cannibal tribes with the Hadzabe tribe, we understand that the Hadzabe are not dangerous to others. The Hadzabe tribe is not involved in cannibalism or the practice of eating humans, and they do not pose a threat to people, animals, or nature. While cannibalism may sound scary to many, such practices are limited to a few remote tribes and do not represent the behavior of most human societies today. So what do you think of both these tribes? Comment below and subscribe for more.